Hello, good morning, good afternoon. How's everyone doing this morning? Or, well, yes, midday, more like. We're going to be painting some kind of desert-esque scenes and we'll be doing some fills, some gradients, as well as um, we're going to be playing around with making back runs work for us in the scheme of landscapes. Still drinking your coffee? Nice. I just finished my coffee. So if you want to participate in this live, what you'll need to do is just get some little pieces of watercolor paper, some scrap works good, you can work in a notebook, whatever you want to do. I'm going to tape mine down to this, so I've got my masking tape here as well. And we'll get started in just a few minutes. I'm going to be using my dry palette today. So the, these are just my dried watercolors. They might not be super dry because I was using them yesterday, but... <laughs> Hello, how are you? We're going to give it just another minute before we really get started. If anybody has special requests for desert type things, let me know. Now's the time to have a little bit of say. If you are joining along, we're going to be using um, a couple different brushes maybe. You can really do this with one, but I've got a size, well this one says it's a size 10, but I feel like it's more like a size 12, and then this is a size 6, but an 8, something maybe a little smaller and something a little bigger. I'm good. I'm good, good. I'm also going to um, prep my dry palette. Oops. Somehow there is an earring back. Don't know how that happened, but there's an earring back <laughs> in my watercolor palette. So I'm going to just put a couple drops of water in all of these in order to refresh. If you're following along, you might want to do the same. Rather than um, the wet palette and the tube paints, I'm going to be using this dry palette today. But you could do the same thing with your tube paints, however you want to do it. I think sometimes for some of these landscapes where we're going to be putting a bunch of different colors and things in them, it's actually easier to work from a dry palette like this. Of course! I'm always happy to do a little class. Alright, so I will do just a little mini introduction. Um, most of you may have actually come to one of these classes before, but I'm doing live watercolor classes every Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Mountain Time. And you can join to watch, you can join to paint along and learn something new. And these last for about an hour, and we work on multiple little ones. So I have actually have four here today. You can do as many as you want, but I'm just going to try to do a couple different techniques so that you guys can see, and you can pick and choose what you want to actually follow along with. Um, my name on TikTok is Rebel Unicorn Crafts, and I do have a Instagram Rebel Unicorn Crafts. I also have an Instagram Lacey Walker Art. If at the end you want to send me pictures, it always makes my day if you actually send them to me, and it's easiest to do it there. And then totally not necessary, but I've had a few people ask if you do want to send me a tip. I do have a Venmo, which is at Rebel Unicorn Crafts. So. We will revisit the Instagram at the end because I really love seeing it. So go ahead and let's start taping down whatever pieces of paper you're going to use. Or, you know, if you're working in a notebook, 
You can either tape off your little squares or you can just do it how you want to. I gotta find the end of my tape. Here it is. And this is just like the Amazon Basics tape. Um, I've also used 3M sometimes or just kind of whatever I have really. So, oops. Go ahead and tape these down. Sometimes you can actually get two pieces kind of taped down using one. And just as a reminder, try your best not to touch your watercolor paper in the middle because you'll deposit the oil from your skin. That does happen less if you wash your hands before you do this or um, if you just have naturally dry hands, unless you're putting a lot of lotion on, then it will also happen. I also, I did figure out how to download the lives, by the way. Um, I've only done it for one so far, but for the last watercolor mixing, like the color mixing class, I uploaded that to my YouTube, which is Rebel Unicorn Crafts, and uh, you can follow along there if you missed that. And I'm going to try to post these there as well in case you want to re-watch them, or if you miss a session, then you can always go back and reference it. or if you just want to do it on your own time. I totally understand. I, I enjoy spending the time with you guys, but I know sometimes it's nice to kind of do your own thing at your own time. So those will be available. <laughs> yeah, I like to touch everything too, so I understand. And you know, it doesn't always happen. It does depend on the paper, but um, it's one of the worst things that happens when you're like really close to being done with a painting and then you go to fill in an area where, where you've accidentally put a fingerprint and uh, <laughs> then all of a sudden your painting won't take any paint right there and it just repels everything and then you've sunk a bunch of time into something and I don't know. I like to avoid those instances. I will give you guys a warning. I'm using a paper today because I'm trying to use up the rest of it, but I don't particularly like it. This is the Strathmore watercolor. It's not one of my favorite ones. Um, it's a little bit more textured, but I, I think it makes the paint look a little bit grainier. So that's just my personal opinion. If it's one that you like, then um, some people really like the texture of it, but I think this one is actually gonna be that Canson and maybe that one. But these two are going to be that Strathmore, so you might be able to see a difference there. Also, just so you guys know, I will be painting two in this direction, and then I will flip this over and do these in the opposite way so that uh, I can keep this better in frame for you. So um, you can keep all of yours in the same direction, but it's just hard for me to be able to show you everything without, you know, kind of sacrificing part of this. Oh, you don't like it either? Yeah, I always thought that Strathmore was supposed to be one of the really good ones, and it's just, I don't know, it just leaves something to be desired for me. So I'm thinking, do we want to do, I want to do some blue skies, do we want any sunsets, and do we want any clouds? Please let me know in the comments right now. And we'll start by mixing up a a blue and wait to see if you guys want any of those other things. I'm just going to put a little bit of water, clean water from a pipette. Remember, always have two cups of water, one that we're going to have for clean water and then one that we're going to have for washing our brushes. It really helps with your color mixing. Okay, we've got clouds and sunset. Cool. Let's, we can all start by mixing up a blue. To me, desert type skies are a little bit more faded because usually there's some dust in the air, but they're also like kind of a vibrant blue more than a deep blue. So I'm going to actually use cerulean. You can use whatever blue you have, but I'm using a lighter cerulean blue and I'm just going to mix that in here. I need to grab one of my tester strips. I've got a bunch over here. If you're brand, brand new to watercolor, you might not know this. 
or I mean, I guess I actually didn't know this even after I'd been doing it for a while, but tester strips are really essential because the color you have here looks way different than the color that you put on the actual paper. And uh, so yeah, go ahead and do that. I'm just looking through the comments. We've got a bunch of clouds and sunsets. Yes, all right. I don't know if I'll be able to do a cloudy sunset. Um, that one might be its own separate class because it's got a couple different techniques in it than what we're going to be focusing on today. Today we're going to be doing gradients, fills, a little lifting, and then we're also going to be working with some of the backgrounds, things that we've been talking about a little bit more. So I'm going to grab some more of this cerulean. And I might not even mute this color today because I do want it to be a little bit more vibrant. Yeah, I think I'm uh, a little bit more, just a little more cerulean blue. There we go. That's the color I want for that. Um, let's go for a really vibrant sunset on one of these. Let's start. I'm going to start with just some blue. I'm going to do it on my smallest one. So if you've never done a, a general fill with me or a gradient fill, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take some clean water and I'm going to put it in this pot right next to this. We're going to be taking our brush. I'm using a round brush that has a nice tip on it. Let's actually kind of show you what the tip looks like. And we're going to be taking the angle of the brush here and we're going to be filling this up with a bunch of paint and then we set that tapered area down right on the page and pull it across. And we're going to actually transition because usually uh, skies get a little bit lighter as you approach the horizon line. So I do make my test strips if I'm out of them, but I just make sure and I save all of my um, scraps for when I cut my paper up because I cut my paper up into smaller pieces and there's always little odd sizes that wouldn't make for a good painting. But the other thing I do is my failed paintings, like if I really hated this painting, I would just turn it in and I would use the back side for uh, testing because you can use both sides technically. All right, so we're gonna do our first gradient fill. So I'm gonna take my, this is a size 10 or I feel like this is actually more like a size 12, but it says it's a size 10 brush and I'm going to load this up with my blue color and I'm going to make sure there's quite a bit of pigment in here because we actually want this drip line. I'm going to make one line across and we're going to get that drip there and then I'm going to start since mine is a really small piece of paper I'm going to start right away by just touching just the tip into that clean water that I put next to it and by just touching just the tip it's going to very gradually replace the pigment in the brush. If we do this really fast there will be a really harsh transition and I forgot we were going to do a, a desert in the front so sorry about that but this is a good learning opportunity if you bring yours too far down you're like oh no I didn't want it to go that far I've washed my brush off dried it off and I'm just going to soak up a whole bunch there so that we can really lighten this down here and you'll barely be able to see that blue because we want the actual desert to be the bottom third so if you need to, if you got way too much on it, you can wash your brush again, dry it again, and we can pull that off. So there, there's a little learning lesson just in case you mess up like me. And you don't want to do this too much because we might get a few of those back runs into there, but it's all right. We're going to just go with it. So let's try to redeem ourselves and remember that we're actually going to stop about two thirds on this one. And by, by redeem ourselves, I mean redeem myself. <laughs> All right, so let's do this one again. This is going to be just another blue one. Ooh, but hold on. Before we do that, let's take, grab a nice, clean, dry couple little pieces of paper towel. And you want to rip them so you get that nice kind of ripped edge so you're not actually getting the pattern on there. Unless you want the pattern, then go for it. But... We want those on hand, we just want to make sure we've got them kind of ready to go. All right, so this one we're going to stop. We're going to start with the blue, make one strip across, dip into that clean water, make another strip across, clean water, another strip across, clean water, and one more for me. 
Then I need to dry my brush and suck up that excess moisture there. And now for the clouds, while this is still wet, you just take the edge of that and just give yourself some different clouds. You can make them bigger or smaller. This is also a really good way if you had a really uneven wash to kind of hide some of those areas by just lifting out some of that pigment with this paper towel. Okay, kind of like that. Might leave that kind of like that for that one. There we go. And this will change a little bit as it dries. If you really don't like it, once it's dried, we can do a second layer and actually change that, or you can leave it as it is. So I need to let mine dry for just a second before I flip my, my page over so that um, I can work on these other ones in the other direction. And the reason I'm gonna wait is because, I don't know if you can see there, but I still have some standing water. And if I flip this over, and then this runs into that, we'll get some really kind of funky things. So I need to leave this drying in this direction. You know, it's funny, you, you say you didn't think about it, but a lot of art, I find once you learn the little technique, you're like, oh my God, it's so obvious. Most art techniques are not that complicated. It's just, yeah, you'd have to be exposed to them so you know what to do. I've had a lot of those moments over my <laughs> learning how to, to paint experience. Okay, I'm st this is still a little wet. I'm still going to wait. Um, I will also talk about why I work on an angle in case you've missed those videos. I do have a few videos on these and I actually show you kind of the difference. But um, in general, we work on an angle if you can because it... <laughs> It helps us control gravity. We've got water and water wants to do kind of whatever it wants to as the paper warps and you know maybe just based on how you're holding it or the surface that you're working on. And so if we tape this down you might have a slanted desk or if you don't like me you can just put this on something hard a piece of cardboard or something that you can hold and you can control the direction that the water is going to flow. Hello hello! All right, I think I can finally flip this over. So on these two, we're gonna, again, we're gonna stop about two thirds of the way down, but let's get some really nice pink in there. And we don't actually need, with sunsets, we don't ever actually need to, or not, we don't, not ever, but we don't have to mix up this color. We can just go, once everything's wet, we can go straight into our, our really bright color. I'm gonna be using this quinacridone color right here and I'll put it here so you can see it a little better but you can also just keep it in your your little pan there either one is fine but we're gonna do a very similar thing to what we did on the other ones and we're going to start with that gradient fill stopping two-thirds of the way down and then while it's still wet we're going to grab some of this pink you can do this with a variety of colors. I recommend, if this is your first time doing one of these sunsets, use something like the um, a magenta, a purple, a red, something that's gonna look nice with your blue, because if you try to do this with a yellow or an orange on one of your first tries, it might get all muddy with the other colors, because those two colors don't, not that they don't play nice, but they don't really make sunset type colors when mixed together. So let's just do ourselves some favors and let's start with this really bright pink. Okay, so let's start with a line here. And then again, I the sunsets always get a lot lighter towards the bottom. So we're going to each time we're going to grab a little bit of that clean water. Just a little bit. If you really kind of dunk your brush in there, it'll replace like wow, replace all of it, and then you'll have a really harsh line. So I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna suck up this water here. We don't want standing water. We do want this to be wet for this part, but we don't want standing water. And then I'm gonna take my dry brush, grab a little bit of this kind of wet pigment, and I'm just gonna drop this along in here. Maybe even add a little more water to this. Ooh, maybe a little bit too much. And with sunsets, because they really kind of flow and that light just glows, 
we can go a little bit crazy, but you want to make sure that this is on the wet part. If I bring this up much further, it's going to be in the dry part. And so I'm actually going to avoid doing that. We can wait for a second. And then maybe we can actually re-emphasize a few of these areas, grabbing some of this magenta color and dot it in to get it a little bit more pigmented in certain areas. Okay, and then, oh, do I ever use watercolor pencils? Not really. Um, I don't know, it's not, it's just not something that I have personally found to work very well for me. I, I mean, I think they work nice as watercolors, but I like to be able to just kind of like really put a whole bunch of color on and um, no, I don't know. I don't know. It's just not something that I do, but I know a lot of people use them and they look gorgeous. So, all right, let's do this one again down here. Starting with that blue, we're going to get that kind of pink type color. Start with the blue, switch over to the clear water, again with the clear water, again with the clear water, and then how about on this one we actually just grab some of that kind of pinky purple and bring that as part of our changeover because then now it's a little bit more purpley. And then we can grab some of the straight pigment and we can touch it maybe along this, the edges. And this, this might actually end up making some kind of cloudy looking sunset areas a little bit because of the way that the water is going to kind of interact with the paint together. Okay, now we have our four skies. So at this point, if you are following along, I don't know if you're doing all of these or some of them, but at this point you actually want to let those skies dry before you do anything else. You might not like what's happening and that's fine, but just let it dry because we can always put a second layer once it dries and it will actually make it a little bit more cohesive if we do that because we can better evaluate it. So I need to let this one dry. I can already tell I'm probably going to put a second layer on this one um, and maybe on this one. Yeah, see, I'm getting a little bit of, uh, I had a little differing of wet and dryness. So where I added that extra pink, I ac actually sucked up some of that extra water. And so now that part of the paper is drying faster than this part. And this might actually work in my favor once this dries and I put a second layer to make kind of that cloudy-esque sunset on accident. It's not actually the technique I usually show, but you know, sometimes happy accidents happen and uh, this might be one of them once I put a second layer on this. So I need to, but I need to wait to flip this over for just a second. So um, I've got about a minute here that we need to wait. So if there are any questions about what we've done so far, please put them in the chat. Now would be a good time for me to talk about anything you've got questions on. We're doing desert today because, yeah, we actually just, we took a little road trip. It's not too far for us. And we went to Taos and stayed in an Airbnb and... I painted deserts for a week and uh, while well, my husband played video games and it, we just had a really nice little break. Neither of us had taken any time off from anything we were doing in almost a year. So, so it was a really nice break and now I'm just in a desert mood, I suppose. Also, while we were gone, it turned into summer in Colorado and we came back to 80 degree weather. Do I replace my your clean water tray often? So I think what you're talking about here is it kind of depends um, what I would do if this got to be too much of that blue in there because it is starting to get to be that way. I would just take a corner of this and I would lift it out. I didn't I don't need to right now with the skies because this is still so light and it's also a nice complementary color. but. I will be doing that um, when we start going into mixing up some of these desert and brush type colors because it probably won't work with the colors we want. 
Do I typically paint from my mind, photos, or real life? Um, so for these, a lot of these come straight from my mind. Like I might be inspired and I might look up like, if I'm doing a specific um, mountain range, I might kind of like look up and get the general feel of that mountain range, but then I paint it from my mind because I want these to be more like little snapshots. But when I'm doing acrylic painting or other stuff I paint typically from reference photos. I actually just tried plein air painting for the first time and besides the wind it went pretty well but um, it was it was an interesting experience. So yeah with watercolor it's a lot from my mind. With acrylic it's from reference photos and often when I'm doing landscapes it's photos that I've taken. That's usually that's like 90% of what I do. Is there a good way to get dried acrylic paint off of a plastic palette? Oh gosh, um, uh, n not really. Um, I don't use plastic palettes with acrylic paint for that exact reason because I don't ever get them actually uh, clean in time and then you just ruin the palette. But if you remind me at the end of class I can show you what I do and it's a super cheap trick and it's a great way to have a reusable palette that uh, acrylic paint, even once it's dried, does not destroy. <laughs> so I, I can show you how to do that. All right, so let's reevaluate these. I really like this, the clouds on this one. I'm definitely keeping this one, leaving this one alone. I think I will leave this one alone. It's not my favorite. Um, there's a little bit pulling from the sides and a little bit of streaking, but uh, I don't know. It's it's okay, and sometimes there seems like there's that, ha it, that haze in the air, so I'm going to leave that one alone too. But these two, I do want to do a second layer before I actually start going, and I think these are dry enough, I'm hoping. Usually at this point I would actually take a hair dryer and dry these, but I don't want to um, destroy your eardrums, so let's, let's do this again. All right, so on this one, uh, I don't actually want this blue to be any darker, so I might just take this, like, this is quote-unquote clean water. It's more like a very light blue, but I'm going to take this clean water on this one, and I'm just going to do a wet wash. I'm just going to wet this whole area. It's all dry there, so the previous layer will be pretty much set in place, but I want to wet this area and get it nice and kind of soaked in and evenly wet. And we want to wait for this to, when you're looking at this, you want to check in the light and you'll see there's like a sheen. You want to wait for that sheen to be there, but you want to be able to see it to mattify just a little bit and to actually see the texture of the paper before you start adding in some of these. It'll help you control the color a little bit more. So I'm going to take more of that quinacridone and just touch that in some of those areas just to kind of brighten a few of those areas a little bit give it a little more depth you don't have to do this if you like yours keep yours how it is but yeah I already like that better cool and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this one I'm gonna take just this kind of dirty clean water I suppose and I'm going to just do a wet top of all of these. Soak up that extra water just with the brush and grab that magenta color. I recently, apparently it finally clicked in my brain how to actually say that quinacridone and it kind of makes me a little bit sad that I'm not struggling with it. I don't know, it was more fun to say it wrong. Ooh, let's in the chat let me know how many of you actually say Worcestershire right or do you add a little extra flair onto it Ooh, use nail polish remover nice I didn't know you could do that add in some real dark Ooh, it's it might be too dried there I might shouldn't have done that but I like it Ooh, look how bright that is 
You don't say it even close. <laughs> Right. Ooh, I'm liking that. I'm liking that sunset. You know, one thing we can do here while this is still kind of wet is I can wash my brush off. Maybe I should drop in a little bit of bright yellow, but I need to lift out with a clean, dry brush a little bit of that pink to make room for. Let's take this permanent yellow deep and let's just pop that in there. Ooh, there's the sun. There she is. There we go. You can use the um, acetone to save your brushes. Does it ever dissolve the glue that's holding them together in there? Cool. All right, I'm liking my sunsets now a lot better than my first round, so we can set these here. Wait for a second. And actually, while we're waiting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep my palette here. So you can use a rag or um, a paper towel, and I'm actually just going to suck up all of these here. So I'm going to take my wet part and grab this. And grab this here. And I'm just going to grab all of my blue because I'm not planning on using that. You could, you could probably actually reuse some of that blue color um, to make some of your greens, but I, I just want to start from scratch, so personally, I'm going to grab all of this, and I didn't use too much pigment, so it's not too much of a waste. If you've got a big old palette, um, feel free to let those dry, because you can reuse those colors, but I just need to make sure I can keep a, a, a small amount here so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, I'm going to flip this over. And mine is dry enough that I can actually move this this way. So we're going to be doing a deserty esque type thing. So um, I'm going to start with mixing up kind of a red sand desert color. So I'm going to put just a couple drops of clean water in one of these wells here. And then I'm going to grab, I think this is burnt sienna or red ochre. I can't remember. I should actually have a little guide. And I'm going to put that in here. Let's test our color, see what we've got. I want that to be a little bit more yellow. Oh, you can just glue them back on. Cool. And I'm going to grab a little of this ye yellow ochre to put into this. I think this will make this kind of a nice desert sandy color. Yeah, I like that color. And then let's get some clean water in the palette next to it just so we can kind of control the amount of pigment. All right, so what we want to do here is we want to be loose. We don't want to overwork this. At first, we just want to put a layer because we're doing um, the deserty type things, but we don't want to do like a full fill like what we did previously. And it only happens if you do it often, so that's in regards to cleaning your brushes with acetone. So if you don't do it too often, it's not too bad and it won't take it off. Hmm. And tester strips. Yes, tester strips are one of my favorite things. There are some people who will actually um, make sure they cut their tester strips to like really nice little sizes. And then they will frame them almost as art. And they're kind of cool, so you can, you can repurpose them. All right, so I've got my sandy color here. You can take whatever one you have. And I don't want to completely fill this in. I just want to do a couple little brush strokes. We want to preserve some white space just to give it a little more interest. And then to make it even a little bit more interesting, I'm going to come in here, clean my brush off, and take that slightly damp but clean brush, and I'm going to just kind of feather out some of the edges there just to give it a little bit more color. If you think you've got too much color, you could also come in and lift some of that up just to give it a little more dimensionality. And then I'm going to, in here, I'm going to mix it kind of a blue-green, but I want it to be kind of like a sagey type green. So I'm going to take some of my, I think 
this is olive green. I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to grab just a little bit of this cerulean hue. You might want to actually clean your brush off. It would probably be smarter, but I don't always do that. And this is going to be too bright of a green for, for my taste. I still want a little bit more blue in there. If you like this color, you can go with it, but I'm going to grab a little bit more blue because I want it to be a little more sagey. It's getting closer, but I also want this to be a little bit um, more muted, so I'm going to grab, what do I want to grab? Uh, this is, I think this one is the burnt sienna, actually. I'm going to grab a little bit of that. Oop, too much. Wash my brush. There we go, actually. I think it's going to be just about right. Yes, that's a little bit better. I could go with a little more blue. Just a little bit more. There we go. That's the color I like. And I'm going to, in just a few areas, kind of touch this just lightly, just to kind of hint that there is some vegetation maybe there. I'm going to wash my brush off. And again, I'm going to kind of feather that out a little bit. And then I'm going to grab some of this yellow ochre, that really bright yellow ochre, just straight from my little pot. And I'm going to put that in a few areas. Again, I'm going to wash my brush off for the most part, dry it off, and then with a damp one, I'm going to feather it out. And then let's actually go straight into this um, red ochre color. It's going to be super bright. I'm just going to touch it in a couple areas. Wash my brush a little bit, damp brush, feather that out. And now is when some of the magic is going to happen because while this is still a little damp, it's going to be pretty much dry, but just a little damp. We're going to take a clean brush and we're going to actually try to encourage some of those back runs to give us some in interesting texture. So you want this to be almost dry, but not quite and you just drop in some of that water in a few areas. Need a little bit more water. And this is going to develop kind of slowly, but it's going to actually give some interesting texture to this. You can see it kind of did the little bloom there, so it actually kind of looks like the top part of a plant. And just using this technique is sometimes better for painting the foregrounds of landscapes than trying to like exactly mimic them because it gives more the feeling than anything. If you put a little bit too much water, you can always, I did there, I can suck up a little bit of that pigment there or the water, standing water, just by drying my brush and then tapping. I already like that quite a bit for kind of a desert-y type thing. All right, now we're going to do kind of the same thing on this one, but this one, since there's, it's nice and like these clouds tell me it's bright day, I'm actually going to start, I want this one to be a little brighter, so I'm going to do it with yellow ochre. I'm going to start just with this really bright yellow ochre, just that kind of touch. And this is one of the hardest things when I started learning was actually remembering to not make all of these touch and just to be a little bit loose. So if you're having trouble with that, I think that's totally normal because you like the instinct is just to cover it, but the kind of the looser you can be with this, the better it's going to be. So I started with the yellow ochre instead of starting with this color um, because I want it to be a little brighter. I want that to be featured more. And now I'm going to go back into that sandy color I mixed up and I'm going to kind of touch leaving some areas that aren't um, filled in, touching some kind of in their own areas, and then having it touch a little bit to that yellow ochre. Hello, hello! Let's let that dry for just a minute because I want to actually kind of control where the greens are going to be a little bit more, and I need these to be drier. Just a little bit. And I'm also, I also want to brighten this up for this desert type one. So let's, I'm going to grab some of this lime green and 
And I'm going to add it to my sagey green. It's not a big difference, but it's enough that that's kind of the color I want today. So I do these every Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Um, and then if we get enough demand, I might do them twice a week. All right, this is almost dry enough, so I'm going to go ahead and start popping in some of this green color. And I'm just going to put that in a couple areas. We don't want this whole thing to be green because deserts... While they do have veg vegetation, they, you know, it's kind of sparse, so you just want to put in a little bit. And then, I want to, since it's the heat of the day, I want to put some real shadowy type things. So I'm going to grab some, uh, I think this is my phalo blue. Yeah, I think that's my phalo blue. And I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to just touch this at the base of where, ooh, got a dog hair. There we go. Touch these at the base of where I put those green bits to kind of show that maybe there's some shade there. Okay, let that dry for just a second. Clean your brush off with water in it. Now let's just drop some of that water in there to encourage some of those back runs. To make it look just kind of like abstracty but also representative of the landscape. And if it's not doing what you want, we can always add a second layer. I think I'm going to end up putting a second layer of color on this one. I think I'm liking this one. I'm going to leave that one as is. But this one I have a feeling I'm going to put a second layer on. Yes, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, which I believe is 1 Eastern and 10 Pacific on Saturdays. And yeah, if I get a bunch of demand for a different time, you guys can let me know. I can start thinking about a second session because I know that this doesn't work for everybody, but I had to pick a time to start, so <laughs> that's what I did. And what I do is, um, so I have the schedule. I do usually come on live a few times during the week just to kind of work on different things, but those are not necessarily scheduled because it's just when I have time. Um, and other than that, I always post a video a day or two before that actually has like a little live reminder where you can set it and it'll tell you what we're going to be doing as well as what supplies you should bring if you want to participate. Okay, so this one is still a little too wet to flip over, but... Uh, since the other two are sunsetty type ones, I want to start making these colors darker because we already know, you know, since it's sunset, there's going to be harder, harsher shadows and none of the colors are going to be quite as vibrant. 19, is that at 740? I always have, I know that the 24 hour clock makes a lot of sense, but I've been uh, only taught on the 12 hour it always takes me a while to translate those times. Uh, anyway, so we want these to be a little bit darker colors now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to add a little bit of blue into my kind of sandy type color. Um, this is an orange. So it's an orangey red, which is going to make it just a little more purple when I add the blue as well as a little more muted, and that's fine. And I'm not going to take a ton, but this is, I believe, ultramarine, just a little bit. I just want to darken this color a little bit to give it a little bit more feel of this color being happening around um, sunset. So grab that, put a little bit more in. And it's a subtle change, but I think it's going to be a little bit more representative. Yeah, I, I know, but in my in my head, because I'm used to the 12, I add, um, I subtract by, tw by 12s. So I'm like, oh, 19, 12, I don't know. Then, then, I, then I have to come up with the difference of 7. I, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's what, how I do it in my head. So, <laughs> all right, we're going to work over here for a little bit. So we're going to start with this color that I muted down. Make it a little darker, and we're gonna do the same kind of thing. Just 
come in with a little bit of that and most of those yellows aren't going to actually show through so let's just go ahead and clean our brush and just add a little bit of that water in there to kind of make those run in a few areas together we're going to have a lot of shadowing so i'm going to take some of this phthalo blue Ooh, it's all right we're going to just we're going to roll with it it was a little bit more than i wanted Take some of that green and touch that along the areas. Because that, that blue is meant to kind of be the shadows. Maybe actually grab some of that olive green and touch that in a couple areas. I'm going to get a little bit more. I want a little more color, so I'm going to grab a little more of this the sandy color touch it in a couple spots and then again I want to encourage those back runs once this dries a little bit more loving the sunset <laughs> yeah laughing at my math <laughs> math is um I don't know it's not not one of my favorite things to do so the older I get, the more interesting it becomes. Let's also put a line, sometimes right along the horizon to kind of define it a little bit more. I take some of this blue and I just touch it right along the horizon and it sometimes kind of just settles that for me a little bit. And now I can come in with that clean water and touch and encourage some of those back runs to happen. Just a little bit basically what we're trying to do with these back runs is encourage different parts of the paper to dry at different speeds which is going to concentrate the pigment around the edges of the wet into the dry part uh, like right there okay and then let's do the same thing here before we decide if we're going to add any more. I'm definitely going to add a cactus to at least one of these. So let's let's do this one here and maybe we'll have Ooh, where do we want which one do we want the cactus on? Do we want it on the pink sunset, the pink and the um, yellow sunset or on one of the blue ones? Just doing the same thing I did before. Touch in a little bit of that in. I actually need to get a little bit more pigment, so I'm going to grab a little bit of that olive green, a little bit of that cerulean, mix those together. Normally I, I would put, you know, test that on there, but I decided not to. So sometimes if you don't do it, it's fine. Hint to some of that vegetation. Grab your blue and touch that to the base of these. Maybe go into the dry just a little bit. Hint to some shadows because the, the sun's going to be coming from this way. It's going to be hitting those and they're going to have a bit of a shadow. So give them some darker spots. Keep the sunset raw, okay, on the blue. yeah definitely come back next Saturday and then again I you might have missed this but I did figure out how to download these lives and upload them to my YouTube channel so if you really want to redo this one I will in the next couple days upload this to YouTube my channel is at rebel unicorn or, well it's just rebel unicorn crafts it works a little different there um, so you, you can actually still do this. I feel like I want to add a little of this yellow. It doesn't usually show up in the sunset type things, but I just think it'll balance with that color a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of touch a little bit in there. And I also lost a lot of this color to that green. So let's go ahead and add those. Let's add that blue line to kind of anchor our horizon. And let's get a little crazy and just kind of touch this on here. Because this one, this one so far is not turning out how I want it to, but I think with enough 
little fiddling to this, I think I can get it to do some fun stuff. So let's leave that for a minute. See, I'm liking this one. This one needs to be darker, so we'll need to do a second layer, but I'm going to wait for this one to dry for just a second before I go and address these ones here. So the paint that I am using um, is, these are, this is a pan set that I made. I mean, I didn't make this, but you can buy these where they come with the blank like cartridges or empty fill bins. And then you can use tube paint. And I'm using a combination of some of these are core, which is Q-O-R, and some of them are Shin Han watercolor paints. I like both of those. Um, there are a lot of really good watercolors out there, and I do not have all of them, so I cannot give advice on all of them. But those are the ones I have. Yeah, pans, thank you. <laughs> canisters, holst paint holsters. Ooh, I like paint holsters because that makes it sound really, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so let's evaluate. I like this one. I'm going to keep this one how it is. I think this is one that I'm going to add a, a cactus to because it's a little boring um, since it doesn't have any of like the sky details or anything, and I think it needs a little something. But I really don't like what's happening here. So let's just do that one again. Let's start with wetting our brush. Let's grab a little of this straight yellow ochre. I'm going to brighten this up a little bit and let's just, let's just put that on there. We're going to do some layering. We're going to grab some of that straight yellow ochre on this one. And just touch that in a couple areas, get a little bit of this green, maybe even go straight into the olive green in a couple areas and let's let's give these just some little bits of hint to some shadows by just having some blues in there we don't need a ton on this one that already looks a lot better to me um, I might encourage the back runs in just a couple areas like here I want this to kind of seem like it's going to be bushes, so I'm going to hint to those. This is just bare, barely damp, barely damp brush. Just a couple of those. And I think that one looks a lot better. Have I tried Daniel Smith? No, I have not. Uh, from, from what I can tell, it's very expensive. Um, and I don't know. I'm just, I have a hard time spending a huge amount on, on art supplies or on like one single art supply. I like to spend a lot of money on a lot of art supplies. <laughs> but I've heard very good things about Daniel Smith. Okay, yeah, I, this one is a lot better to me. I really like that one. And uh, let's go ahead and let's add our little cactus here. So I'm actually going to switch over. If you come to one of my classes, you'll see that I mainly just use one brush. And I could do this for this, but I'm going to try to use a, a smaller brush. Um, obviously, I am a very bad brush owner, so there is no lacquer left on the handle of this, but it still works just fine. So I'm actually going to go with kind of a bright color. Um, I'm going to use this green here. I'm going to put a little bit more water there. I'm going to grab a little of this lime green. This is a size, I think, 6 or an 8 brush. Obviously, I can't tell because um, I destroyed it. <laughs> so I also do a lot of acrylic painting, too. And I do a lot of um, landscapes. I, I That's all I did on our little vacation was, was paint. And so I've got a whole bunch of... Um, now a little acrylic paintings of the mountains there. I'm going to grab some of this. This is the um, sap green. Yeah, I like that color for the cactus. So we're going to add in um, the cactus. And most of you will probably already know this, but in case you don't, in general, one of the quote unquote rules of art and I totally encourage you to break all of the rules but sometimes they make us feel a little more comfortable 
and that is the rule of thirds. So we split our paper up into third segments. Here, which is why I had us do a sky that was two thirds of the way down because it's going to be more naturally pleasing typically to the eye. Um, but then we want to actually have our cactus or whatever our, our prominent feature to actually sit at one of the intersections between those thirds. So we could put it here, which would be a third over and a third up from the bottom, or we could put it over here. I mean, you could try to put it up here, but, but then it wouldn't fall into our landscape. So I will be putting a cactus, I think over here. I feel like it's gonna fit nicer over on the right side. And again, anytime somebody tells you a rule of art, that does not mean that you actually have to follow it. Feel free to break them, but sometimes they just make them a little bit easier, especially if you're you know, new to stuff or, I don't know, sometimes just making a decision. <laughs> so I'm gonna put mine here. I'm going to take this green color and the first thing I'm gonna do with this little brush is I'm just going to bring this down and make, this is gonna be, I think, like a Seguro cactus. These were not actually where I was, but um, they're, they're fun to paint, so I'm gonna do that. And then I've got our main stock and then we're going to come out to the side and we're going to pull it over. And then if you look at these cactuses, these don't usually line up right next to each other. The one on the other side is going to connect usually a little bit higher or a little bit lower than the other one. And I, th I think he needs to be a little taller. Let's make him just a little bit taller. He wishes he were a baller. There we go. And then while that is drying, what we can do is grab some blue and hint to some of those lines that might be on that cactus. These don't have to be perfect because, you know, this is just like the impression of a landscape. But we want to kind of like hint to the fact that there are some different things going on on this cactus. I think he needs to be taller too. Just... His shape is not how I want it to be. Ooh. We're just going to keep going with this. This is this is a funky looking cactus. <laughs> All right, let's add some more blue. We want to hint that maybe there's again a little shadow, so maybe it's a little bit shadowy at the base. Maybe at the bottom of the arms, there's a little bit of a shadow too. All right, this is officially the worst cactus that I have painted. <laughs> so glad that you guys could see this live. I'm gonna hint to some of those lines. And maybe let's drop in some of that lime green just right at the top. Just to really give him a little bit more color or oomph or something. I'm going to come back in with this phalo blue again while this dries and re-emphasize the base. Maybe just a little bit here. Maybe I've got a lot on my brush. All right, it's coming together a little bit better. Yes, happy, happy Saturday. So there's our little cactus. I'm liking this one a lot more. My cactus is okay. I think it does help the painting. I'm not crazy about the actual cactus, but you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. That's all right. We're gonna move on, and I wanna make both of these darker. I think they just need it because um, things are a lot darker during sunset. So I'm gonna sw swap back over to my size 10 brush, or 12. I, I feel like this is a size 12, but it says 10. I'm gonna take this sandy color, and I'm just gonna kinda go over most of this. Not all of it, but most of it. I'm also gonna get a lot more of these blues in there. So I want this to be real kind of shadowy. And then 
going to grab some of this olive green. I just want it to be darker and more muted, so I'm going to touch that in. Oh look, there's some sagebrush here. Just imagining some sagebrush there. And let's put a little bit more blue in. I want, I want a slightly heavier shadow. You could use some black um, if you want. I always find that uh, for shadows, black looks just a little too harsh. Uh, but that's a personal preference, so... Now, while this is still drying, I'm going to take a damp brush and just tap some of these areas to make some of these little bushy type backgrounds because sometimes they're really nice to encourage there. I'm going to grab a little bit of that extra. I need to be patient. I need to just let this sit for a second and do, do its thing. Oh, I just want to keep touching it. This, this is one of the hard, hard things to learn, is when to just kind of walk away. In general, I already think that looks a little bit better. It's got a little bit more shadowing to it. Uh, looks a little bit more like it actually kind of fits. But, I don't know, it's okay. And then, let's do a similar thing, but I'm going to be a little bit heavier on this. Um, kind of sand type color. Maybe even grab some straight yellow or red ochre to put in in a few areas. And maybe we actually hint to where that sun is coming through by actually putting some kind of yellow colors right along there to say like, yes, hello sun, you are casting a beautiful shadow there. Okay, I can try to hold this up closer. Now I'm going to add a little bit more green to some of these areas, making it a little bit more blue-green, especially as it gets closer where there might be more shadows. Grabbing just some of that blue and touching that under. Give those plants their shadows. Another reason um, not to use black for a shadow in watercolor is because if you use a blue, you can always add more blue, and then sometimes when it runs with the green, all it's going to do is make a slightly more blue-green instead of kind of muddying the, the actual pretty green color that you have. But again, you do you. Okay. So there is a little bit of that. Again, I'm taking a damp, pretty much clean brush. Once this is starting to dry, just starting to dry, and I'm going to touch and just put a little bit of extra moisture along a few of those areas to encourage just some kind of natural formations to happen. So there's this one. I think I'm going to leave that one. I think this one will be pretty good too once it dries. So let's let it sit for a second. Um, we're going to be wrapping up. So if you have any last minute questions, let me know. I'm going to let these dry and I'm, I am going to attempt to take the tape off of these once they've dried enough for me to do that. If you are at the same spot as me and you're going to be taking the tape off, Please, please, please use a hair dryer on kind of a low heat setting and just heat up your tape because it will release the adhesive um, and then you won't rip your paintings, which is always really nice to not rip something you spent a bunch of time on. Uh, I will not be doing that because, well, I don't want you guys to have to listen to the hair dryer. So I will have to be brave and careful. So let's actually, I'm going to flip this over. But this is a great time if you want to ask any questions on anything. I'm happy to answer stuff the last few minutes. Oh, I will also, um, while this 
After I get one of these out, I will go grab that my palette that I use for acrylic paint so you can see that in case you're still on. I just think these look so much cuter when, uh, when you pull them out so you can see the full effect. I love the little border that the tape gives. Makes it like a little Polaroid. So, trying to be very careful. To not rip it. I can do it. I can do it. There we go. So we've got one little one done. Oh, and it's so much cuter when it's out. See, now I really love it. Oh, uh, okay, so let me grab this palette. So I actually use two different types of palettes. Uh, if you were interested in, if you don't finish your paintings super fast, these are for, so we're switching topics a little bit for acrylic. If uh, you don't finish your paintings fast and you don't want to lose your paint, this is called a Masterson Stay Wet palette, and it actually has, um, oh, so I forgot that I actually had some acrylic paint in here, but I do, <laughs> so this will be good. Um, this, I've been gone for a week, and there's a sponge under here with distilled water, and then this is a piece of paper, but these are still wet acrylic paints, and if you use acrylic paint, you know that it does not stay wet, but these are, um, really nice for keeping acrylic, nice acrylic paints actually wet. So that's that's one option. The second, that's an easy cleanup one, is I take a piece of picture glass here, and then I take like the back of a frame. So usually what I'll do is use like an old frame that broke or something, and I'll take the back of the, the frame and then I'll take the glass, and then I very carefully tape them together. That's the worst part of this, is making sure you don't cut yourself while you tape them together. But then you can actually put your paints here and mix them up. And then what you would do to clean this off once they dry is you just spray them. And this will help it peel off a little bit. And then you can take a palette knife or an X-Acto blade and you can just scrape this off. And it just comes right off so you can see it there. So those are my two recommendations for doing actual acrylic uh, or have, having an acrylic palette because I have... I have friends who use the um, plastic ones with it, and they seem to make it work, but if you were even remotely irresponsible like me with actually cleaning things up when you're done and you let them dry for too long, it can just be a nightmare, and then you'd spend as much time trying to clean it up as um, what you did creating it. So I'm going to take the rest of these off, too. And I just sprayed it with water. So this is just a, a spray bottle from like the dollar store that I just put some water in. Of course, <laughs> you're terribly irresponsible too. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Sometimes um, I'm so excited about the painting process and then either I paint for like until it's too like really late and I can't I don't have the time then to clean up at the end of it I mean I, I could make the time but I'm tired or sometimes you just feel tired after if you get like a really good painting session in and you've totally exhausted all your creative energy I'll put that over to the side so I don't dump that somewhere oh I really like this one I really like how that one turned out. The other thing, if you are going to try to take off your tape um, without a hair dryer, it's better if it, the paper is actually fully dry. So this is not, this is still lightly damp. So there will be a higher risk of me actually ripping these ones. I have hopes that these are going to actually look better than they do now once I, I take them out. And again, you know, we're just practicing some different skills and making little snapshots. They're kind of supposed to be like, I like to think of them as like memories of a place. Like if, you're, if your brain tried to 
remember what a place like this looked like or something. Oh yeah, see, I think that's better now. Get the tape off. One more to take off. I can do it. There we go. Oh, got a little ribbage on the top, but not nothing terrible. I mean, I'm really ripping my backing board here, but that's okay. It's so usable. Okay, there we go. Yep, I ripped a little bit there. But yeah, though I think they all look a lot better. Um, what if they're a little, little tape bubbles? Oh, they look so cute now. These feel like little snapshot memories to me. Okay, so... That concludes our class for today. Um, I'm taking requests for general classes coming up. I've got a little list, um, and we'll see what we do next week. But they're going to be every Saturday, 11 a.m. Mountain Time. I do post a video a day or two before announcing the subject and the supply list, and there's also a way to um, set a live reminder so you can do this. And if you did follow along today, it would really brighten my day if you would send me uh, an Instagram message with the paintings that you did. You can do that either at Lacey Walker Art or at Rebel Unicorn Crafts. I use both because I can't quite figure out if I want both or just one. So you can go ahead and share those with me. I hope that everyone had just a wonderful day and or has a wonderful day and had fun doing this. And thank you so much for joining me. I will see you guys again soon.